Hello and Assalamu alaikum. I am Parvez Khan, Assistant Professor in the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication, Kohart University of Science and Technology. The subject is National and International Affairs. The course code is JMC341. It's our lecture number 10, which is Pakistan's relations with People's Republic of China. Before we start our lecture, we'll be talking about our objectives, what the students will gain after attending the session. The students will be able to understand Pakistan's relation with China in historical context, which will also give them a geostrategic understanding of the relationship between the two countries, and it will obviously give them the dynamics of relationship in post-Cold War era. So this is what we're looking forward to after the students will gain after attending this session. So this is obviously the map that uh, we can see is Pakistan's uh, neighboring China. It's a big border, and uh, we can see it's an emerging economy. It's a, uh, one of the emerging powers in the world, and Pakistan's uh, is right next to it. And obviously, uh, there are other countries, India, Afghanistan. So yes, we'll be talking about the historical context first, where it all started, and obviously right big from the beginning of the, the relationship started uh, soon after the independence of the both countries. Uh, Pakistan was the first Muslim country to recognize the communist state of China and the diplomatic ties started in uh, 1951, on, uh, started from 21st May 1951 and uh, obviously Pakistan was one of the first countries, especially in the Muslim chain, uh, to recognize China, uh, which was a big development. Although uh, Pakistan initially had the tilt towards West uh, in terms of policy and uh, uh, all, all these things and especially foreign policy was tilted towards the West. Uh, it was a remarkable change uh, when it comes to see, especially uh, when it when it comes to see uh, having relationship with the communist state. And uh, it further enhanced, the relationship further enhanced when an opportunity arose when China and India uh, fought wars and this was a, uh, a beginning of new opportunity between the two countries. Obviously, the, both countries uh, then uh, looked forward to the strategic depth uh, and uh, how uh, how they can support each other uh, in, in different terms. So this was the beginning of the new relationship uh, since 1962 and which is obviously followed by Zulfikar Ali Bhutto who was the foreign minister at the time who visited China and they discussed some important issues especially related to boundaries because boundaries were loosely defined and this is considered one of the uh, one of the most peaceful boundary resolutions and peace negotiations during that time uh, after the foreign minister visit so so that's that's the indication that how uh, cordial relationship were in the beginning how things uh, went in the in the positive direction for both countries and they both recognized the need for each other so this was basically the initial post independence relationship that started between pakistan and china now we'll go a little bit more in depth with some brief timeline and obviously infrastructure remains key between the two countries and obviously nowadays we're talking about CPEC and BRI and then road linkages and economic zones but it started from 1978 as well when Karakum Highway was built in 1978 and it's, it's, a, it's a big highway which connected uh, Pakistan, northern Pakistan with western China and it's considered a hallmark there back then because uh, carving out such road and difficult terrain it's a big big uh, remarkable achievement back then and obviously it didn't start uh, stop uh, over there the, obviously both countries recognize the need for uh, nuclear civilian technology and obviously china and pakistan reached a comprehensive nuclear cooperation agreement uh, in 1986 which was followed by uh, many other programs and even now it's considered that uh, china has supported uh, in pakistan's nuclear technology obviously uh, keeping in view the tensions with India and uh, the, the escalations of their nuclear technology. Uh, so these both countries are, uh, especially China is considered to be one of the countries which helped out with Pakistan nuclear program, especially then in 1999. It didn't stop just there. The, the, the relationship went further and military assistance came and which is why uh, the GF-17 Thunder uh, it came out and it's considered uh, one of the pioneer aircrafts uh, which was jointly produced with Pakistan and China and the contract was signed in 1999 and it was followed by 2002 the Gawadar port which, which is basically uh, the, the beginning of uh, CPEC project now we can see that uh, how important Gawadar port was for Pakistan and China and uh, important in today's context as well but it started in 2002 with, with Chinese as the mega investors and then uh, in 2006 uh, the free trade agreement which increased the trade volume uh, almost from uh, 
uh, enhanced uh, free trade in the unprecedented access to the market. So this is what happened between Pakistan 2006 and, uh, and 2010, uh, JF-17 Thunder was inducted in Pakistan. So this is the brief timeline that explains that how our relationship started uh, diplomatically, then enhanced uh, structurally by building highways and then obviously nuclear program and in the 1999 uh, its military assistance and obviously previously uh, the mechanical arms uh, and ammunition factories were set up in Texla. So this explains that uh, over the years how the relationship has evolved and how uh, it has gained strength over the years. Now, importantly, another aspect that we need to discuss is that Pakistan provided the breakthrough between the relationships of United States and China. And it all started in 1970s uh, when the uh, when, uh, United States in the 1960s was already fighting an ideological war with the Russian, Soviet Russian states and the uh, Cold War was there. Recognizing a communist state was nowhere near the American policy, but Pakistan provided breakthrough in 1970, and which is why, uh, which is why in 1972, uh, United States President Richard Nixon uh, came to China, and uh, Pakistan was basically working on it through back doors, and it was Henry Kissinger who, who was basically through secret diplomacy with Pakistan uh, provided a key role in removing the bitterness between China and the United States. So, so this is an important development in the history and which is why China also changed its model of development it, from, from communism to socialism to various developmental models. They focused more on economy, more on exports. It became the leading exporter in the world and which is why the, the relationship between America and China is still very tricky. As scholars, some of the scholars even call it dancing with the devil that despite the fact uh, there is an economic war in between, uh, there's a fight for supremacy in the world. Uh, but still, uh, they both have dependency on each other. There's a lot of trade between each other, and there are lots of uh, elements that needs to bring into. It's not as simple as people say that all oh, these countries will go at war. But there are a lot. There's a lot at stake between the two. So, so Pakistan was the first country uh, that provided uh, secret backdoor diplomacy and helped uh, ease the bitterness between United States and China, which is why China also looks at Pakistan in terms of diplomacy because Pakistan uh, have raised voice on bigger platforms outside especially in United Nations for China so this explains that it's it's not just a one-way relationship obviously now China being a bigger partner bigger economy uh, has a bigger role to play but Pakistan's role cannot be underestimated in this context uh, now we talk about the assistance, when we talk about assistance, there are three kinds of assistance we can talk about. This is military assistance, which began in 1966. Strategic assistance began in 1972. And economic assistance began in 1979. So these are the, we can categorize Chinese assistance in these three terms. Uh, and obviously, when you look at defense, uh, there have been lots of projects, the aeronautical complex at Kamra. Uh, and then we have uh, the heavy mechanical complex uh, at uh, the rebuild factory Texla, Pakistan steel mill and obviously the different aircrafts and tanks. Uh, so uh, apart from that there is also nuclear support at a Khushab reactor the credit goes to China uh, for creating um, which Pakistan needed the much needed plutonium for their nuclear program and then have ammunition factories the technological support and obviously when it comes to aircraft once again JF-17 Thunder aircraft, K-8 Karakuram, the Al Khalid tanks all these are Chinese collaborations that one cannot simply ignore. And when we look at the global context, it was not easy for Pakistan in its initial days. Uh, bilateral relationship with the United States, USSR and Pakistan tried to adopt a middle way, but obviously as the Pakistan tilt has been towards the West. It's not easy to recognize uh, a country which has completely different ideology. It was not easy for Pakistan to go for China in initial days, but still somehow over the years, despite resistance, Pakistan has managed relationship, in fact, key relationship with China. And also because of the, uh, the, the, the tensions with India has caused uh, uh, both countries to come near to each other. So that's another element that we'll talk about. And uh, similarly, the researchers also say that uh, uh, that uh, Pakistan and China has long history of reliable and time testing relationship but uh, when the bipolar structures uh, especially during the Cold War 
uh, how Pakistan managed its relationship with China is also remarkable enough. And so this is what, it was not easy to, to summarize these points, it was not easy for Pakistan to maintain relationship with China despite international resistance and despite uh, the difference in ideology, especially which is completely opposite to capitalistic economy and democracy and all these things. But somehow, uh, Pakistan has maintained and Pakistan and China have grown ever stronger than before. So it, even the global context was different, but the relationship remains stronger. And you can see in the picture that yes, clearly countries, uh, the strength it shows. Support, when it comes to support, China supports Pakistan on the issue of Kashmir and similarly Pakistan supports issue of uh, Tibet, Taiwan and obviously uh, many other issues which have been criticized by the West, especially to to democracy or human rights issues, uh, Pakistan still supports China. And recently, Pakistan haven't said much on on the abuses to the most Chinese Muslims, where uh, about the uh, concentration centers. Uh, there's not been much talk about it in Pakistan in terms. The issue has been there. The international world has condemned some of the atrocities at the concentration camps or uh, in Uyghurs, uh, but. There's not been much uh, in our press or uh, statements from the top leadership, uh, just a simple. But it explains that how Pakistan supports China, uh, regardless of uh, uh, what whatever the circumstances are. Uh, and similarly, China has also supported Pakistan during the war on terror and the Western aggression. And similarly, we have seen incidents uh, that when uh, when some Western countries or Western policies have been uh, have been threatening Pakistan economically, Chinese statements have been coming stronger and supporting Pakistan. Although there have been some times that yes, there have been some uh, some moments of silence, and sometimes, especially recently, uh, when there was a lot of talk about the grey list, uh, Chinese were, Chinese leadership remained a bit silent. So, but despite that, uh, we can see the relationship going stronger and stronger than before. And uh, the trade volume between the two sides grew from $5.7 billion to $100 billion in the period between 2000 and 2015. So it shows the dynamic relationship, which is not just uh, uh, diplomatic, it's strategic, it's economic, it's milit military support. And along with that trade, the most important element, Pakistan uh, is one of the uh, highest uh, importers when it comes to arms and weapons. Pakistani imp Pakistan import lots of arms and ammunition from China. So similarly, there's a lot of trade going on uh, between Pakistan and China, and especially uh, even the, the the latest ones were the submarine technology the Pakistan bought. So yes, technology and trade and strategic depth. There's a lot there when it comes to support uh, supporting each other, and especially our reliance on Chinese economy. But that was up till now. Now, the, now we'll talk about something which is changing. And but before we we talk about that, let just this one picture sum, sums it all. That when Chinese President uh, Xi Jinping was visiting Pakistan, JF-17 Thunder escorted uh, the airline like this. So this explains the depth of the relationship between the two countries, the strength of the two countries, how how well uh, they're looking forward to each other in the in the regional context, because obviously. Uh, China too wants to expand uh, its global reach and the access to the markets and obviously through the Central Asian states and the um, the Middle Eastern countries and Pakistan's Gawadar port and CPEC project can be of great benefit. So yes, we're coming back to CPEC now, which is the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, which is a multi-billion dollar project that serves as the flagship of China's Belt and Road Initiative, which is BRI, which is obviously uh, 50, connection of 52 countries, connecting all the resourceful countries and expanding the projects and resources and the uh, investments done. Basically, what is CPEC? We'll talk about it. It's an infrastructural project in Pakistan uh, with Chinese investment worth $62 billion. We started from $46 billion, but it has now reached $62 billion. And it's enhancing the country's infrastructure, which includes modern transportation networks, energy projects, special economic zones and roads and infrastructures and these economic zones will provide an opportunity for the local economy to go up and also provide China the economy uh, to, to, to give boost to their to lesser developed province which they look forward to develop so this is a big project and obviously both China China looks to develop its lesser developed provinces and Pakistan too is looking forward to uh, maximize 
their opportunities in, in terms of Gawadarpur, uh, in uh, the, the warm waters and the economic zone. So this is an opportunity for Pakistan as well. How it will turn out? Well, so far it's going on. And obviously there are some challenges such as militancy, terrorism, Western pressure, uh, Indian aggression to, to a certain extent when it comes to Gilgit, Baldistan talks. Uh, but time will tell how it goes. It's a big mega project connecting uh, uh, when it connects the BRI, it connects the whole world. It's a bigger opportunity for Pakistan and Pakistan can be part of it and will be part of it and looking forward to it. How it can maximize profits but it depends a lot on regional circumstances and geostrategic uh, politics as well uh, and and obviously uh, CPAC has significant uh, strategic and economic importance for China as it links uh, markets in Middle East, Africa and Asia, uh, Xinjiang, the China's largest province will be connected with the port of Gawadar. So yes, we've already spoken that this is how the chain will go developing the uh, the lesser developed provinces with, with Pakistan's Gawadar. It's an opportunity uh, both way. Uh, it's a big mega project, but currently uh, the, the circumstances, uh, this, uh, it's another opportunity for Pakistan, it's India and China, the relationship, the border disputes at Ladakh at the moment and Pakistan has clearly uh, given statements, especially from the foreign ministry that they, they clearly stand with China on this. So even though there are some tensions between India and China, but Pakistan's stance is clear, it's clearly supporting China, we've seen media reports and some the statements published from foreign ministry so that indicates that Pakistan's relation with China is uh, still the same and uh, is powerful and uh, it's going on. What are the future goals? Obviously there are economic goals which Pakistan is looking forward to in terms of CPEC project uh, which is obviously part of the uh, BRI project uh, and uh, Belt and Road Initiative. Pakistan looks forward to it to benefit from it. What Pakistan wants uh, its economic benefits and obviously strategic Pakistan needs a strategic ally when obviously uh, in Afghanistan you know that Afghanistan has attracted superpowers around the world first it was USSR now it's America and uh, there is also India at one hand and Pakistan is looking forward to regional allies and obviously China has been there uh, as, a, as a friend as an ally for the last 50 years so Pakistan is still looking for that and that's a future goal as well and uh, in addition to that uh, China has opened its, uh, its, its policies and uh, it has reviewed and renewed a lot of things especially when it comes to uh, cross-cultural experiences and they've opened scholarships and so this is what Pakistan is also benefiting from large number of students are going to China uh, it's benefiting from their scholarships so that's something new that came and obviously since CPEC project is there so Chinese language uh, is helping Pakistani students and Pakistani uh, professionals in, in, in a number of ways and it, it's also creating opportunities job opportunities business opportunities so yes that's also another future goal that Pakistan leads for to because obviously the business market economy has shrunk in the last one year or two uh, and especially in the, the recent times in pandemic now Pakistan's reliance on future markets future trade and obviously country which is economically much more stronger uh, Pakistan is looking forward to that but it will also remain a challenge uh, military assistance will always be also be uh, one of the future goals but one of the challenge also remain that China too is recovering from has recovered from the pandemic but the global politics and the, how it was spread how the pressure from the West and the different cases related to pandemic uh, uh, will it, how it will affect the economy of China uh, that will be answered in the coming days but obviously it will also have an impact on Pakistan so Pakistan will obviously be looking for the future goals to maintain strong diplomatic ties with China as it has always been there and along with that along with diplomatic ties Pakistan will continue to look at China in terms of uh, strategic partner uh, it will always look forward to their economic assistance and uh, obviously since it's a regional ally so the relationship so far uh, will be uh, focused uh, the same way as it has been in a number of years so so much or much more or less Pakistan's uh, relationship with China will remain the same in the in the coming days and this is how Pakistan relationship has been uh, there may have been some bitter moments obviously uh, uh, related to the policies pro western policies that Pakistan adopted in the years it it, it have been viewed with uh, by China uh, in uh, as susp uh, with suspicion but Pakistan somehow uh, have come back strongly and the relationship is stronger 
and obviously uh, CPEC will be uh, a big, a big uh, test for Pakistan how it benefits from Chinese investment and how it goes about it. But this is how the relationship with China is obviously strong, it, it's there. But there are some questions that students can think about. Uh, the, uh, obviously with Park China spellings wrong with Park China relationships. Uh, what do you think about the relationship? Uh, uh, what's the significance of China and uh, China in geostrategic context? And obviously uh, is CPEC going to be a game changer? So yes, these, these are going to be the questions. Will Gawadar port have an impact on Pakistan's economy? So these are the questions. How how important Gawadar port is going to be for 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 Pakistan? How Chinese relationship will turn out in future? How Pakistan China friendship will have an impact with relationships with India? Uh, should Pakistan have trade relationship with India? How Pakistan can benefit from the from the Chinese development in economy or their progress? So these are some of the questions that students can ask and think about and read more about obviously the number of articles and research papers that that discusses for us the most important recent discussion is cpec how cpec is going to have an impact on pakistan economy how cpec pakistan can take benefits of these economic zones how cross cultural experiences can be beneficial to pakistan and these are the questions that that can come uh, in current affairs papers and uh, general knowledge and this, this is important to talk about so yes this is our session for today. I hope that you enjoyed the session. Uh, we'll be talking much more about these types, uh, more relationships of uh, uh, more, more Pakistan and neighboring countries, the relationship between two countries in the next classes. So I hope you enjoyed the session. We'll be in touch. And these are the references and you can use uh, uh, some of the books and readings and some of the articles that we we'll talk about. So I hope you enjoyed the session. We'll be in touch. Thank you very much once again.